better, I think. Or a little up. Like that. Hello! Again. I don't want to forget to switch to the glasses that I can see what I'm doing with. And... Uh, yeah. It's happened before. And I hope it never happens again. Now I will see a lot better. And uh, today I thought that uh, we would tie one of my favorite patterns for uh, sea trouts in River Yam. Uh, and tie it like a sea trout samurai. Because those are the ones that I will mostly use in the beginning of the season. So I will nice went well. I will uh, tie one of these with those uh, Sea Trout Samurai Suna. And uh, here I have the bronze, ex uh, medium, and uh, fluorescent orange, extra small, because we want some small points on the fly where there it's visible, like this. Tie them together and tie them together hard, as we always do, so they don't come apart. And uh, as a ribbing, which I haven't taken out yet. So, yeah, I will use gold ribbing on this one instead. Alta gold ribbing, but uh, it should be sealized silver, but it doesn't matter. It's my pattern, so I, I can change it whenever I want to. Tie in the ribbing first on my side. And then my absolute favorite SSS braid, the hot orange in flames, fiery copper. I think it's fiery copper. That's why I use it in my coppery flies. And start winding it on. Cover the thread you use to tie it in and then just work your way forward as we always do. To about here on this fly we will use uh, lots of dubbing and rubber legs and stuff like that. You that has seen my other sea trout samurais know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't seen it, you will see in a few minutes. So here I take some nasty rusty dubbing and I start where I tied in the SSS braid so we cover up the ugliness. And then we go up to here because we're gonna have two wings and a lot of a lot of dubbing in front of this. So I spin my ribbing, which today is Alta Gold, and it looks Superb together with the hot orange in flames. Need to spin it a little bit more there. Like 
that and in the front here we don't have to be thorough because we're going to cover all this up with dubbing afterwards so tie it in with a few wraps and then fold it back and tie it in with a few more wraps wraps and now to the dubbing brush to get these strands out to create some beautiful flashy body around the fly and now we start with a fiery brown wing and a little comb to take away the fluffiest part of this and then we taper the wing a bit by pulling in the middle like this and fewer and fewer strands this looks pretty good and I will tie this in quite short a loose turn pull down one two three four five tight turns and then I pull it down on the sides a bit if I want it wider and I wanted it wider and I take away some strands that did not end up where I wanted them to end up so we cut this off And it's time for some angel hair, nasty rusty. Should, should have put out before. And here we have it. You can see that I use the nasty rusty a lot because it doesn't have so many strands left like this and put it on wide on top of the wing and make one turn and fold it back and one two turns this time and then I comb it through to see that the spread is good and it looks pretty good and I cut this off a little longer than this wing because I want the flash to be seen under the grey wing which we will put on top here. So here I have a bunch of natural grey. I will do the same thing with this one. Take away most of the fluff. And then tapering this as well. Pull in the middle. That looks pretty good. And this should be a little bit longer. So if this is as long as the strands of flash that I left. And loose turn on these two. And pull down. One, two, three, four five hard turns and then we spread this wing as well and look from the sides we can take away a few of the long ones on the side so we get a better shape it's quite wide now which we want this fly to be fat and wide cut off the excess And now I will take some of the nasty rusty there we are this I think this is the flash I can take the flash because I want the the copper ones so I will take a few copper ones 
from this nice derosity flash material like that four strands I don't want it to drop them like that and we also try to separate them a bit before we tie them in between our fingers like this <clears throat> one turn and one more turn or two turns and then if you're not happy with them you can put them where you want them before you glue the head and now they look they sit where I want them to sit and then we cut them off in different length like this and there was one that was a little too long and now it's time for some glue there it is too close to find it and uh, put on a little glue here for the wings and the flash I'll use quite much on this because the wings were pretty high as you can see so the strands from the wings will suck in the glue like that And now it's time for the dubbing in front, which also will be nasty rusty. And now I will make a big lump of dubbing in front of this. That was why we was weren't able, to, why we didn't have to be so thorough when we tied in the wings and the flash because we will cover up all that with a lot of dubbing here and the first turn as close to the wing as possible push it down push down the dubbing not the the wings you want the wings to stand like they do and be able to swim well as you can see I use lots of dubbing on this fly like that and now we will brush out this beautiful nasty rusty dubbing and especially underneath so we blend it with a with the dubbing that we already tied in because it looks so much better when you do that but it's not important at all because the fly will fish the same like this now I'll just check so the spread of the dubbing I brushed out is the is somewhat symmetric in the chaos of this fly and I think it looks very good and now it's time for the rubber legs and on this fly I will use bright orange uh, I think it's called barred when there's black small 
black and ah, whatever. I can use actually one of these, I think. Just cut it off in the middle and put it in on your side first with loose wraps so we can adjust them as we want them to sit when we are done. So no hard turns here, loose wraps. Now I can adjust them to where I want them to be. It looks good. Now I take the two that I want under underneath and then I pull the others in as well. And here I don't use any pressure because as you can see now they uh, you know, it looks awful but because I didn't use any pressure I can move them to the position where I want them again and they will stay there like that it looks a little better and a little hair clamp pull all the rubber strands back now it's time for the glue and i will lock these rubber legs in with glue instead of with tight turns because if i use tight turns they will move around and now they will not because the glue will secure them and I still use loose turns now just let the glue do its job and then take this way and one of these got very f with a thread but as I did it so fast I could pull it back so now we are happy with the with the rubber legs. Now it's time to put on some fluffy hackles in the front. And here I chose a big black, very soft, fluffy hackle. Cut a little triangle for you to tie in. <clears throat> like this. Check the rubber legs. They look good. Now we can uh, start to wind on this fluffy black giant hackle. First turn as close to the rubber legs as possible. Like that. And then we just move our way forward slowly and thorough. This fly is meant to be fluffy and uh, <coughs> la, la, la. overdressed, as you probably have noticed already. So I broke the stem as again, which is kind of like my hobby, breaking stems. And I'm tying on soft fluffy hackles. Okay. 
it in first like that hold back the rubber legs and the hackle and tie it in one two three four five and then I used my little comb to see that the hackle is tied in the way I wanted to as much the same amount on around the, the fly like that and then now we're going to end this up with a uh, grizzly hackle in hot orange as in the original Sune fly and here I don't have to be I don't I can use lots of hackle on this too a lot of terms because this is supposed to be a fat and fluffy fly for hungry sea trouts see if this one goes better to tie on without breaking the stem tie it as close as you can to the black hackle and Try to go as little forward as you can because we want, want it to be tied as tight as possible. It's very fluffy so it's quite hard sometimes but I think we will manage. this and lock it in one two three four five and the fly is almost done we will cut off the ones on top so they get a little shorter but they will be longer than the ones underneath and they will swim on the wing with the wing and these two will be shorter to create more vibration from them like this and now you can adjust them a little more if you want to there we go <clears throat> this fat and fluffy fly is almost done Now we just need uh, this is the wrong one. I I want to have a turbo tungsten in. Oh yeah, a, a turbo cone head in tungsten for this fly. So it gets a little bit of weight from the cone to balance the hook nicely when this soon sea trout samurai is hunting for fat chrome sea run brown and now a few wraps of glue 
and then just press on the tungsten turbo cone head hold back the hackle and try to get all this on the same place don't move your thread forward and don't wind it on backward not backwards but to the left from my side of the fly we want all the uh, tying thread to end up very tight so where is my Bauer pike tube here it is I'll press this down like that and screw on the cork on the glue otherwise I will flip it over and ruin a lot of stuff which I've done about a hundred times so I would like that to stop and not doing that again take it out of the vise and I blow in the back to see that the spread is good and I think so and uh, fiery brown is pretty nicely spread and the uh, natural gray on top it's uh, the symmetrical chaos I'm looking for in my flies for early fishing and uh, a lot of brushed out dubbing which we also have underneath here and then the rubber legs let's see it's okay but this one I want it to be a little more to the right, but can never be too. Oh, you know, those of you who tie with rubber legs like this knows that they don't always want to end up exactly where you want it to. And now we just cut off the fits tubing extra small. Leave about. Can this be two and a half millimeters, three maximum? And melt it down a little by little, like that. And then I take my Fredin Flies dubbing needle, put it in the hole, and make the hole a little bigger so I can fit in my thicker leaders if I fish somewhere where I need a thicker leader uh, I think it turned out quite nice quite nicely <clears throat> and this is one of the flies that I will use in Drivriam also. And the hackle is standing almost straight up. Looking good. And thank you very much for watching. And uh, uh, I will tie a new fly soon. And I will film these flies a little bit in the water when I'm going fishing so you can see how they act with the rubber legs. You want to be vibrating a little bit. I will tie another fly soon. And this is the Sea Trout Samurai Sune. And uh, this uh, Sea Trout Samurai is tied like Michael Fredin's samurai flies, but these flies are meant to be wide, fluffy, and they use rubber legs and a lot more hackle 
than on his beautiful sunrise. So thanks you, thanks you a lot for watching, and uh, a new film will come soon. I hope that I have some time over to tie something. And uh, bye bye. Have a nice day. Cheerio.